What's up guys, I'm BTC, more information about the new hero Ash, and Jeff Kaplan confirms they're currently working on six new heroes. There is a whole bunch of stuff to get to. First thing is a little bit of bad news. The PTR is not supposed to be updated with Ash until next week, probably Monday. So if you were hoping to play her on the weekend, well, it's probably not going to happen, which is really unfortunate. Now, I do have a couple of videos planned. I'll go through all of her abilities and break everything down. I'm also going to do a Mythbuster video to check out all of the interactions and all that sort of stuff. Both Jeff Kaplan and Jeff Goodman gave out a bunch of information about the character, the ultimate, how that stuff works, and what they're planning in the future. I'm going to go over that in just a second. First, I want to show you these are the legendary skins that Ash is going to have. Remember, there's going to be two versions of each of these, so this is what one of them is going to look like, and then there's going to be a color change for the other version of it. Also, funny side note, there was a lot of fake leaks about BlizzCon, but there was one that was accurate. This one right here was posted on October 24th, and as you can see, it has correct information about Ash as the new hero. It's unfortunate that the only real leaks that we get get completely lost in the mix of all the different fake ones, but it is what it is. Let's talk about Ash and her abilities. Her damage seems to be quite good. When she's hip firing, it does a little bit less than McCree, but when she zooms in, it does more, but less than that of a Widowmaker. I think it looks like about 170 to 180 damage for a critical. They didn't ever explicitly say it, and it's sometimes a little difficult to tell when you're just watching the clips, but it does seem to be somewhere in that range. And also, her reload is completely unique. All the other characters in the game have to go through a complete full reload every single time. Now, you can animation cancel it halfway through, but with Ash, it's different because she actually reloads one at a time, and you can interrupt it anytime you want and then resume firing. Now, you can't just go and hit one shot and then reload, one shot, reload, because there is going to be a little bit of a time loss there, so you are going to want to have it keep reloading and then, you know, if only interrupt it if you absolutely need to, but it's a really interesting mechanic. Also, personal preference, lever action weapons are just awesome, especially when she reloads it by spinning it around like Arnold from Terminator 2. So cool. They also talked a lot about Ash's ultimate Bob. He functions almost like a full character. The game treats him almost like another player. He can capture and contest points. You can put him to sleep. You can put him in a Zarya bubble. You can sleep him, nano him, heal, damage boost, all that stuff. I mean, almost everything that you can do to a regular player, you can do that to Bob as well. He also has 1,200 hit points, and while that may seem like a lot, from what I've seen, he's actually really easy to destroy because after his initial movement, he does just stand in place and kind of turn around and shoot in all directions. So even though he's got that lot of health, it actually might be really easy to deal with him. He might not feel as strong as we might originally have thought. Some other things to briefly mention, the upcoming Winter Wonderland event, they confirmed that there will be no new game modes just the snowball fight and yeti hunt that we had from previous years. There will be new legendary skins, of course, but that comes with every single event, but no new game mode for that. I don't know when they're actually going to start adding new game modes for any of these events. The Summer Games, Junkenstein, and now Winter Wonderland. Probably the next new event game mode that we're going to have is going to be the Archive event, the you know Uprising Retribution, because they kind of have to make something new every single time. So that might be what they kind of limit it to every single year. Also, on the PTR, they're going to be adding some changes to Doomfist. Now, when Jeff Kaplan talked about it, he mentioned it in kind of like a balance thing, meaning that they might reduce the power, but also lower the cooldown on it or something like that. But the way I heard him talking about it, it does seem like they're just giving Doomfist a flat-out nerf. And I think that's going to be really problematic because the character is really buggy as it is. And I've said this before, I don't think they should be buffing or nerfing the character until they get it actually working properly, and then you can start changing its strength. As it is now, it's like, there's so many times when you try to rocket punch someone and you just pass right through them anyways, so nerfing it when it does hit is just going to be really frustrating. And the last thing is the new heroes that are coming up after Ash has been released. 
So Jeff Kaplan did recognize that there is a big problem. There's not enough tanks and not enough supports. There are more damage characters than tank and support combined. So they do want to add a lot more of those. He confirmed that they're currently working on six new characters. Numbers 30 through 35. And if I had to guess, I would say at least four of them are going to be some combination of tank and healer. And maybe two of them might be DPS. Now, who are these characters going to be? Well, we pretty much already met one today during the McCree animation. And that is the new female Omnic. Echo. Now this is kind of like the stand-in Athena. I don't think they're ever going to add Athena to the game because that's the narrator or the, you know, the introduction, all that sort of stuff during the matches and that kind of stuff. So I don't think they're ever going to add her into the game, but it looks like Echo is that counterpart that's very similar to her. And when you look at this character, she's definitely not going to be a tank, possibly a damage dealer, but you look at it and she's kind of frail. She does seem to have the ability to fly. I mean, she can obviously hover just like Zenyatta because she never actually touches the ground. But she has these wings, so it's very likely she's going to be flying in the air. Are they going to make another flying support kind of like Mercy? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It might actually be in the damage category. But from the way they're talking about the character, the way it looks and all that sort of stuff, my guess is it's going to be some sort of support, some sort of healer. Jeff Kaplan hinted at Echo being a character as best he could without completely confirming it, but I think if they're going to build up the character as much as they did and have it be as important as she was during the McCree animation, then it seems pretty much a guarantee that this will be one of the upcoming characters, maybe number 30 or 31. With their current release schedule of three heroes per year, it's going to take two full years before all six of those get released. And that seems a really long time when you consider the fact that we have a really big shortage of tanks and healers in the game right now. We need those characters fast. You don't want to wait two years before we finally get the heroes that are needed in order to fill out the roster. Now, I know some of you might be asking, well, does that mean they're going to stop at 35? I don't think so. I think they're going to keep adding characters for a very, very long time. As long as Overwatch is a thing, they're going to keep releasing new heroes for it. So there you go, guys. Unfortunately, no PTR till next week. Unfortunately, we have to wait. But what do you guys think about the new hero? And what do you think Echo will probably be when that character is added? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.